Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Good morning. We are here. We are back with a new recap for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City Season 4, Episode 2. Excuse my rusty voice. I'm a little sicklish. Um, I have missed out on this recap. I'm a bit late because this week... My vacation was over. I had my first week back at work, but I'm back. I'm ready. I am clocked in, and I have several thoughts about this episode. Let me tell you that I am hooked on Salt Lake City. I think they're doing a great job of pulling it all together without Jen Shaw. And yeah. I, inquiring minds, would like to know how other franchises are going to compare. But anyways, we start off this episode with Miss Baby Gorgeous and Meredith Marks going on their little strut. They're going on a little walk because they do need to talk things one-to-one. -one. As Meredith asked Lisa last episode that they would get together to really discuss moving forward and leaving their tiffs behind in the past that had happened throughout season two and season three. So we obviously see a little screen grab from Lisa's hot mic moment that occurred in season two, where she literally did trash everything in Meredith's existence. Um, the both of them really seemed remorseful of each other and i really think that meredith and lisa are two individuals that just get it and they did what had to be done for them to not only move forward in their friendship but also to keep going on on the show as a dynamic frenemy duo that is definitely needed for this franchise. We then go ahead to bet whether Hitney and Whit Hitney <laughs> Whitney and Heather they are taking a little, you know, salt bath. They are very relaxed and the mood is set for some juicy gossip. And let me tell you something, every time they do something spa related in Salt Lake City, it just makes me want to leave my country and move there. It just looks so snowy, escapey, rich vibes, amazing all around. So these two are discussing Lisa's son, Jack going on the Mormon mission and I was really shook when Heather said that they had to swear under death oaths that they would not reveal any details as such for that mission that they would do in private and I thought that was that is a bit problematic and I it's I mean no disrespect to any religion but it's definitely not my cup of tea but we then jump to the iconic Mrs. Meredith Marks and to her husband, Seth. They are discussing their marriage. They've been on a rocky path. They've opened up a podcast. I do not know if that was the best decision for them. I have personally not listened into it yet, but... um. Maybe I'll give it a try. I really, really like Meredith as a housewife. I think she is unhinged and iconic and always dressed down to the gods. So they are discussing this upcoming vacation that they're going on um, with the girls. It's going to be at the Trixie Motel, the all pink resort, and it's looking fabulous on the pictures already. And I will touch on that later as they do show the girls arriving at their final destination. We then go ahead and give Miss Angie Katzenavis, I think her first scene ever as a full-time um, snowflake holder in the franchise. They are showing her beautiful home, Miss Angie K. Maybe a little thirsty, but she is coined 
down. Have you seen her home? Have you seen the decorum? Have you seen the outfits, the glam, the huge kitchen? Goodbye. This is what a housewife really is when she has a pretty penny to her name. So basically, she's talking about her husband and the way that they met at the salon, that he's a hairdresser, and that she fell in love with him because of that. And they have a beautiful uh, daughter and also a very cute dog. Um, they are making some salads in their kitchen. Cute family dynamic, I have to add. It looks good. Also, her husband is very handsome. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. The gossip is that she has the fear or at least the thought that she's being alienated from the group, but we will have to touch on that later as this will reoccur in the episode once again in a later point in time for Miss Angie Katsanavis. We then move on to Monica and her mother. And let me tell you something. Monica and her her whole self is just a big breath of fresh air to the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City because she discusses everything. She's laying it out all in the table. She's taking back the power of exposing somebody all to her own. She really said, if I join a show, I might do it the right way. Um, She's half Portuguese, half, I think... Dominican or Colombian. No, she's half Portuguese, half Colombian. So Miss Monica is seemingly trilingual, which beauty and brains, kudos to her. Um, we see her and her mother prepping packages for her brand, Bria Baby, that is all about cute um, accessories and like napkins for infants and children and babies. And it seems to be going well for her. And even if she says that she does not have the goods that she, other housewives on this franchise has and that she sometimes even feels inferior, I think for the way that she has handled herself financially from what we have seen, the house is still cute. The house is pretty. Um, the children look very well put together. So my heart breaks for her that she does feel inferior a bit, but I think it was nice for her mother to uplift her and even her daughter to chime in. And let me tell you something, her daughter gives me Hadid sister vibes, very model-esque. So who knows if we have another Bravo supermodel on our hands. But the two of them really were uplifting Monica and Monica was saying that she went into the Louis Vuitton store to buy a bag to kind of play in the same field as the other housewives, which she really did shed a few tears and was raw, real, and vulnerable with um, us in the scene. Anyway, we jump back to Whitney and Angie, and we learn that the two of them have form this unusual friendship. They've bonded really well. They seem to get along. Um, we have a couple dinner with Sean, Angie, Whitney, and I forgot Whitney's husband. Justin, I think is his name. They're all having a little couple dinner, a little get together. And what I found a bit robotic about this scene, I just do not know if it's just the demeanor of Angie and Whitney, um, they kind of seem to be a little hellbent on ruffling the other girl's feathers, which, I mean, in one way is a little thirsty, but the other way it's a personal thank you from me because we do get an activated Meredith Marks next week and an activated Heather Gay and an activated group altogether. So I guess kudos to them. We then jump back to Monica, and she is meeting up with Heather. They are going to a boutique in Salt Lake, or I don't know, whatever city they are choosing to film in now. Um, they're taking out some, putting out some clothes aside for their upcoming trip, and Monica's describing herself as 
again, not as fabulous and put together as the other girls, which I have to debunk with this picture that I put on my screen right now on the video. She looks stunning in her confessionals and I think even in a plastic bag, she would look fabulous because she is very beautiful. Um, Heather is having this, you know, notion about Monica that she's friends with Angie K and the others and that gives her kind of a bad vibe but she's trying not to be judgmental and giving her the benefit of the doubt whilst getting to know her because she cannot people cannot always be guilty by association and I am happy that she is noting that because Heather could be guilty by association with many things allegedly with um, the demeanor of Jen Shaw. So I am happy that she's choosing herself to be free of judgment in this. And she's also mentioning how she's known Angie K actually for 30 years because they've been going to high school together and she cannot trust her because she thought she had natural curls back then, but it turned out to be a perm. I said, Heather, you are so messy, but I am here for it they are you know talking about each other now heather's asking about monica's personal history what's her story what brought her here so is she mormon is she not monica's saying that her mother adopted the mormon faith she was kind of raised in it but she struggled a bit for with that you know mormon identity as you know as a child but she was married in a temple. She um, did practice a bit of Mormonism, but she then was excommunicated from her church for sleeping with her brother's sister's husband So for 18 months. So she basically had an affair with her brother-in-law, which is just a mess. But um, she did end up feeling really bad and confessing to a priest in the Mormon church. And basically she, they said, um, shout out to everybody. We had fun with you. You are being excommunicated. But the man, the, the brother-in-law faced no repercussions. He got away unscathed, which is just typical and misogynistically so factual with religions um we have to do a whole separate video on that but that seems to be the often case um but yeah that's i guess monica's story that will probably also come up in the later episodes we then jump to mary cosby and miss mary cosby is making sure for herself that this Trixie Motel is serving some good Don Perignon champagne of two, 2003, honey. And she was appalled when she learned that they do not serve that. Um, her facial expressions are my comedic relief of the day when I watch Salt Lake City, so I appreciate her for that. Um, I'm so happy Mary Cosby is back, period. All the girls are arriving. Mary is struggling with putting her own bags and taking them to the airport gate. Um, as always, thank you to Mary Cosby for rejoining this show. Um, they are all arriving. They are all, you know, waiting on their plane, taking them to, I think. Let me think. Where did they go? Palm Springs. Palm Springs. The air is a bit thick between the women. They are waiting on Lisa. Whitney is supposedly getting a later flight. And, you know, we'll touch on that later. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. And Lisa actually loses her $60,000 ring in Palm Springs. I would have died right then and there. Um, she's really upset. She's calling insurance. She's calling a jeweler. She's calling security at the airport trying to find it. Monica even put her 
hand down the public restroom toilet monica you are a real one for that i would have never done that that is disgusting but kudos to you um mary tells lisa to get over it and she even asks if that ring really was sixty thousand dollars worth um mary is just uh, uh no words iconic icon we definitely feel her very much needed presence on the show right now we then jump to whitney and angie k they have arrived prior to the girls they have made an effort to surprise the others with angie k's <clears throat> arrival and joining of the party because meredith the one that i think through this all is did not invite Angie K, and that sits well with Heather and I think Lisa as well. No, not Lisa and um, w uh, Heather as well, because you know the rumors that Angie K spread about Heather that they were doing Barbie scissor kicks with Jen, and that's how she ended up getting the black eye. A mess but anyways here's the Trixie motel it looks good it, it it's I mean it's cute it's pink but it low-key gave a bit I, I I myself am a bougie very bougie person I have high standards but it definitely gave motel so I have to co-sign Mary Cosby's thoughts on that and Monica is giving in the agony of it all, Lisa, a few chips to, to just calm down. And Mary's like, can you not put those crumbs on my clothing? I do not like crumbs on my clothing. I mean, Mary has been here for a second and it's just like she's never left. It's amazing. So this is the closing scene. Everybody's arriving. They're checking in. Um, they're not really pleased with Angie Kay's, you know, joint arrival with this party and then we have the preview for the next episode and let me tell you something they did heather bad because i do not know if she peed or puked in that bag i feel bad for her she's had a few espresso martinis the group is getting riled up everybody everybody from a to z is being activated Angie K is throwing things at Meredith. Meredith is threatening her with you can leave. Meredith is a very good uh, with the alcohol. Um, she's even taken Lisa Barlow backstage and talking about she can go there. She can go there with Angie K because Angie K is going for the jugular and the rumors and nastiness about her, honey. She was swirling and uh, with her words and Lisa was shook. <laughs> I inserted a few pictures and Lisa was looking terrified. She, I think, had flashbacks of, you know, the uh, other arguments <laughs> with uh, uh, Meredith in the past. I think Sis was a bit shook. She's even holding her hair, holding Meredith's hand. And Meredith's telling her that she can tell Angie K to F off in the best New York accent that I've ever heard in my life. Those rumors that she's living part-time in New York are never going to leave Miss Marks, but we still love her for that. Anyways, you guys, this is basically it for this episode. Um, I have about 20 minutes worth of footage of recap, and I rarely, even rarely with Atlanta had that in... Early on, like this in the season, I feel the workload already that I will have when further episodes are go going to come out. But I'm here for it. I am so intrigued to getting to know Monica even more, getting to see these dynamics change and possibly grow or possibly be destroyed. Um... The activation is definitely in Meredith's hands right now and in Angie K's. Um, I'm also curious to see how Heather and Whitney are going to be, uh, you know, after their whole mess, uh, after these few seasons that they had about basically nothing. So I hope they do not repeat that stale storyline. 
But all in all, you guys, this was a great episode. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell down below so you do not miss out from me anymore in the future. And I will definitely see you guys in the next recap for Salt Lake City or in another video. Bye.